of Arizona Congressman and member of the House Oversight Committee, Representative Andy Biggs. Congressman, uh, give me your assessment, if you would, of what we're hearing out of these hearings. Uh, obviously, you're from a border state. Uh, this has been a big problem of so many people coming across the border, along with fentanyl. Not that they're coming together, but they're both coming over. So your thoughts? Well, I think you saw a dichotomy today where my friends across the aisle, the Democrats, they don't want to really acknowledge the crisis that's going on. And I think that's what you get from the Biden administration. But these chiefs who work for the Biden administration, they are telling us, look, there is a massive problem on, on the border and it's coming everything from fentanyl to human trafficking to human smuggling to sex trafficking and uh, the associated uh, crime that comes with it with criminal gain coming in. And when you have terrorists coming in, it's a real problem. And uh, the other side didn't really want to acknowledge that. But the, the, the sector chiefs, they were quite candid, uh, yet guarded, because they worked, they worked for this administration. But they were guarded. But they did pre present a very dire circumstance in the border. Yeah, it's interesting you say they were guarded. I, I was watching uh, this morning. And among the questions was about um, uh, a border wall. Or, or, or something similar to it. And the question came up as whether they were told not to include a wall in their request or in their presentation. Um, and it's clear, Congressman, that they don't want to be political. But if you could read between the lines, what message are you getting? That it's, it's the policies. I mean, when, when Chief Maudlin says that there was something distinctive that happened in January of 2020 that saw us go from a fairly controlled border to a massively, I mean 2021, to a massively out of control border, and that the people coming thought that it was that our border was open for some reason. I mean, he, he wouldn't tell us what that reason was, but he says, for some reason they thought it was open. Well, I can tell you what that reason is, because that's why you had people showing up in Tijuana that said uh, Biden uh, uh, let us in, uh, you know, coming in across the border. So I think they were guarded, uh, but between the lines, I think every American watching it knows it's the policies of this administration that have produced this debacle at the border. Yeah, because everybody watching will see the chiefs really wanted to stay away from the political conversation, but like you said, they were telling you how bad it is down there. Uh, by the way, something going on tonight I read somewhere, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre giving a preview of what uh, we might expect uh, for President Biden's uh, State of the Union speech tonight. Listen to this. Well, as you know, the president is heavily, uh, as I've said many times, heavily engaged in the writing process. When you when you hear the speech, you're certainly here. Uh, there will be no question that this is a Joe Biden, uh, Joe Biden State of the Union speech. Uh, so just want to make that really clear. And by the way, um, Ken McCarthy has said he's taken it off the table whether he's going to rip up the speech for anybody that was wondering. Um, I, it is interesting, though, the dynamic. You almost get the feeling that this is kicking off the campaign if Joe Biden actually runs again for president. And I did want to show this Associated Press NORC poll. Overall, 78 percent of Americans do not want to see President Biden run for re-election in 2024. 62 percent of Democrats agree with that. They don't want to see him running. And then over the past couple of days, I'm sure you saw it, Congressman, that people are not happy economically, financially, in their personal situation since Mr. Biden took office. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think the vast majority of people feel uh, like they, their life's not any better. In fact, that it's worse now in the last two years, specifically economically. But they can also point to crime if you live in a big city run by Democrats, the border issue. And I think that that, that Chinese surveillance balloon literally floating across our country uh, that they would have kept sil uh, silent from us, uh, you know, kept it from us. I think that also adds to this sense of insecurity that we feel in America today. And uh, there's really it's really attributable to, to Joe Biden and his policies. And so he's going to have to really deliver a, a really rousing, optimistic speech, and, and I don't know that he's capable of doing that. You know, I have good friends that are out in um, Scottsdale this time of year. Uh, I'm kind of curious uh, what your experience is in Arizona. It's probably really populated about now, and then along about April, May, June, July, when it's really hot. They, they kind of go back to where they came from? 
Yeah, they yeah, the 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 winter visitors tend to leave about May. Um and then the re local residents tend to uh seek shelter in the mountains or somewhere cooler about right. July and August. Yeah, as well they should, but still a great place. I've been there many times, still have friends there. Congressman Biggs, thank you so much, sir. Thank you.